Welcome to the Echo Cast. I am Bond Diesel. You can also call me Morgan if you would like. And we are going to dive right in on this episode. I'm going to do a little better job of trying to make these a little faster paced, a little more interesting. Uh, this one's going to be pretty heavy on talking about updates on the stream and content and such. So let's jump right into that. So first thing, the Division 2 art print E3 exclusive giveaway is still going on. It's going till the end of July. I've got many ways to enter into it it's through uh, Gleam. You can find the link on my Twitter. I'll put it in the descriptions of these podcast posts. And I suggest checking it out. It's a really, really cool little poster. And I'm not under the impression you'll be able to find them anywhere else. So check it out. Um, someone asked me recently um, about these specialization speculations. Um, they have a small but dedicated fan base, which is awesome, where I speculate about the different specializations that we might get in Division 2 based kind of on the idea of the three we've seen already. I think they're going to be released seasonally. I think we'll end up um, with a lot of them kind of like the Siege operators, but we'll have to see. I'm currently working on more of those videos um, they're a little more intense than the videos I typically make, so uh, just be patient, and I should have some out uh, probably towards the end of the month. Uh, Discord is back. So I used to have a Discord. It actually had a pretty good number of people in it, um, but I tried to model it after Discords that had like hundreds and thousands of people, um, and I just felt like it was kind of a waste of my time. I wasn't taking time to interact on it. Other people weren't really using it. Um, everyone has a Discord now. So I got rid of it. I regret it, but I've started another one. It's going to be more focused on the Division 2 hub and the, and the EchoCast, um, but with some of my content and my friends as well. Um, I'm going to keep it real simple for now. So um, again, there'll be links for that. Check it out. There's a link for it on my pinned post on my um, Twitter. Uh, and if you uh, are interested, just let me know. And I can shoot you the invite link. Uh, so I did a little charity event. And in the preparation of that, I made some uh, adjustments to my logo and layouts and stuff like that. And while doing it, I kind of decided I like the new color scheme. So if you haven't noticed, um, for my Bond Diesel stuff, uh, I've got this uh, kind of black, blue, white, gray kind of color scheme. Um, I actually really like it because it, it reminds me of my high school sports colors, oddly enough. Um, so, you know, check that out. I have decided to um, go for a green screen. Um, I'm still deciding whether or not I'm going to try to rig one up um, or just get like the Elgato one. Um, pretty huge difference in cost and money and I'm going to need to do some educating myself when it comes to lighting. Um, because I'm finding that that's way more important probably than the actual green screen itself. So um, I kind of want to do it to clean up the stream a little bit. Um, the streams I like to watch, a lot of them have this. And it seems like if you do it the right way, it's not that big of a hassle. And the way my stream room is set up, uh, it actually wouldn't be too bad to like roll it away. Or to get it out of the way because we have a little extra room attached uh, to the room I'm in. So we'll see. So be on the lookout for that. And finally, I uh, tentatively have a guest for next week's episode. And hopefully uh, Bronson and I will be able to record a discussion. Um, you know, we're still trying to figure out the details. If you have any requests, things that you'd like to hear him talk about, me ask him questions about, uh, let me know on Twitter in the discord dms whispers whatever let me know i'm i am wide open and until we record uh the the script is not finished so feel free to let me know what you'd like to hear from him um, i'd like to have him on more than once if we have enough material so uh, i'm i'd like to think i know the game pretty well in a very casual sense um and, and he definitely 
seems to know the game in a deeper sense and just as a the, the mechanics of the game in general um not just the division but other games like it so i would really like to have his perspective on some stuff um and i suspect i'll learn as much as anyone will so the last thing is we did a charity stream yesterday on saturday this is being recorded on sunday this week and uh it was for autism speaks uh, my job is related to uh, people with autism. I, I assist people with getting jobs and um, some various things through a state program. Uh, my CMHC runs the program uh, in my general area, and uh, this is a cause that means a lot to me. Um, just advocacy for people with autism and early intervention and stuff like that. Uh, so we did a 12-hour stream. I played PC and Xbox Division Survival. I played a little bit of Warframe, and I played um, some Rainbow Six Siege. Eventually, the servers were having some trouble yesterday. Uh, so long story short, we raised uh, just over $1,200, um, so about 100 bucks an hour, which um, surpassed my expectations by about double. I thought we may pull five or 600 bucks, which I would have been elated with. I would have been so happy. It was um, it was a lot of fun. It was really really cool, um, and I am still like just in. I'm, I'm not amazed that it happened because I have full faith in how good the people are in this community and the people who I follow and who follow me. Um, but even then, it still just blew my mind. And um, I don't know how weird people would be about being called out specifically. But some people donated a lot of money and some people donated what they could and no matter what you were able to do even if you couldn't donate and you just hung out or you retweeted or you hosted me um it was all incredible and i think each and every single person who had anything to do with it at all it was um probably the highlight of my uh, content creation right up there with being a star player if you want me to be totally honest that was obviously an insanely awesome experience but that you know a single 12 hours was definitely in my top three and i think every single person who was a part of it it was fantastic so state of the game recap there is none <laughs> there was no state of the game um people need to keep in mind right now that if they aren't already those guys are all about to start their summer vacations especially the uh the Malmo, um, the European guys, um, they get, I think, three, four weeks off. Uh, some of them, I think, even maybe get more. Um, so news is probably going to be pretty slow. Um, that said, it's worth mentioning that towards the end of most of their vacations, I'm assuming, that at least some of them, if not all of them, will be participating in uh, PAX West in the United States in Gamescom in Germany in August. Um, I assume and expect that the Division 2 will be featured at both of those. I know there's Division star players that have been invited by Ubisoft to be at both. Um, I would say that the safe assumption is that they're going to show off the same demo there. They're going to talk about most of the same information. If I was a betting man, I would say that it may be reasonable to guess that we may get a little bit of new information, but if you're one of the people who is hoping for some windfall of DZ, PVP, even story information, I would be careful. It'd be nice if even if they don't give us any of that big stuff, if they at least maybe answer some of the important but maybe less known questions like, anti-cheat on PC, Chronos Max issues, some of those things. Maybe they can drop some little hints, some uh, some lag stuff, if they what you know changes they've made, the netcode, server structure, stuff like that. If they can't give us anything big about the game itself, uh, I think this might be a good opportunity to get a little, maybe a little bit of back-end information. So we'll have to see. I don't know. I'm excited to find out though. I would, I mean, a new trailer or something like that would be insane. That's, but at, at, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of not expecting that. I, uh, I see this both of it as a information drought 
and as the calm before the storm. So we shall see. Uh, when it comes to division news, um, next week, I believe it's the 19th, uh, Julian Garrity and others will be at Comic-Con San Diego um, doing a segment talking about narrative design and the division two. I really don't expect any giant info drops in this talk. Um, it's hard to tell. I'm not sure. Um, I am curious to if he's going to expand anything on how he said um, during E3, during one of the interviews, that the Division 2 story, I, I think he said towards the end, is going to have some huge plot twist that um, I believe he said changes everything. Um, I have to be 100% honest. One, I kind of wish I didn't know that. That's one of those things that now when I play it, maybe there will be some like healthy um, you know, anticipation, but a part of me kind of would have been totally cool with just thinking like, okay, it's just going to be a single player. We'll play through it, some cool stories, some, some little twists. We'll see what happens, and then we'll get to the end and start on the end game. But now there's this expectation for this huge twist. So maybe they'll talk a little bit about that or at least the thought behind it. Um, who knows? Um, I believe it's going to be broadcast. So if you can't catch it live um, or if you aren't there, hopefully we all get to check it out either on Twitch or as a podcast or some kind of recording. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, Sherpa company uh, had their talk with L Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and Splinter Shield on Saturday where they talked about the hunters and went uh, into a real deep dive. Um, the thing about a lot of the lore with the division is that um, there, there's so little that's concrete and um, that may be on purpose from the first game. Uh, it may also have kind of uh, had something to do with some time uh, limitations uh, that maybe they dealt with with the first game and, and couldn't go as deep into some things as they wanted. But what it's left us with is uh, not a blank slate, um, but a, a pretty spacious one. And um, the Hunters are probably the thing in the game we know the least about. And um, they they had some really fun conversation. Um, some little tidbits of information that uh, from the lore of the game, some factual stuff that I didn't know or had forgotten. Um, and then a ton of speculation. So um, they, they have... Um, ideas uh buzz lightbeer uh had uh an outlook on the hunters that i had never considered um and i did find very interesting um and and splinter shield obviously you know had had his information as well so so check it out um it's on their twitch as a video i think they're gonna put it up on youtube as well but if you check out their uh their twitter account uh it's it's uh, pretty easy to find um if you just happen to notice if you're a creepy stalker um like some people uh red storm appeared to be in malmo recently so um that is uh you know they're working on this big new game of course they're there um so just some kind of fun things to to consider what kind of stuff you know to be a fly on the wall in those meetings would be uh rather cool so um be on the lookout for maybe little hints that terry spear loves to drip drop on people Kid in the candy store. He just wants to give the candy to everyone, but he knows he can't. Love it. Uh, the last bit of TD news, um, and it just kind of cropped up in the last 24 hours or so, is uh, Marco bringing up the EMP, EMP bug that he had actually pointed out in a video and on Reddit um, four or five months ago. Um, whenever we have these issues, especially at this point in the game, I look at almost everything, really, probably in life, but especially with the division, um, in two ways. In one way, I look at these things and say, you know, what's the best case scenario? What do I really want to happen in this situation? But I also always look at these situations and what can I actually expect? Like, what's realistic? You know, why, you know, what, like, sure, you know, to take the emotion out of it, basically. And in this issue with this EMP bug, which I won't go into, if you want to find it, look into it. Um, there, there is quite the risk for exploitation of it. Um, and I think that's why he's going to bring it back up and likely make a video and, um, and make us think about it. Um, 
it, it's one of those things that if if it can't be fixed or if they just don't have time if it's just not in the cards with the team that's on the live team for division one um this is one of those things where it only affects the part of the player base that plays pvp which although i believe that's a pretty small percentage it's also one of the more vocal percentages um and they paid for the game just like everyone else did and deserve the respect of their experience being fixed when it's broken um I'm I'm afraid we may just be at a point in the Division One where issues like this just may not get fixed, and that's not an excuse. I don't think that's okay. Um, but that comes into my non-emotional side of it, and saying that there's lots of things that aren't okay, but that's just they just are what they are. And um, with this particular issue, as well as some other ones, I I, I think. I understand being quiet on it because they don't want to give it more publication than they need to. At the same time, especially at this point in the game, I think it's okay if they just say, "Yeah, we know we've, we've tried and there's no easy way to fix it. There's no realistic way to fix it. We're sorry or something, you know, or I don't know. Um, I think that they, they've learned a lot when dealing with issues in this game over the last two and a half years. Um, but, but one thing that would still be nice um, is, is to, to kind of just say that, you know, sometimes it's not always going to be good news. And it hasn't. Um, but there's, there's an issue, especially like with this one, because it looks like it's, it's bubbling up. It's going to get big in some capacity. As big as a thing can be in this community. Um, and some information is better than none is, is how I think, uh, this situation should be dealt with. So at the same time, you know, uh, if it comes down to legal or PR and th that's the thing that I don't think we always realize, I'm sure there's plenty of things the devs and the CMs would love to tell us, but that there's people in offices who have deemed that information not uh, good to share for whatever reason. Um, and, and, I, and I suspect that people don't realize how often that um, may and likely is a limiter to what we can find out about situations like this one. So keep an eye on it. Um, I do think it's worth having a discussion about, and I, I do think it needs to be paid attention to um, in, in some kind of information or acknowledgement of the issue and what's being done about it, or if nothing can be done about it, would be better than just silence. So we'll have to see. Uh, for my speculation piece, I just wanted to relatively talk, um, talk relatively quickly about raids. Um, I've seen there were more posts in the last week on the official account, you know, asking people to tag the people they're going to raid with and stuff like that. Um, I've never really been involved in a game that has raids i kind of thought that the incursions were going to be that experience i had heard about i never played destiny one um and i just wasn't really into destiny two and when we got the division uh, maybe they were intended to be something bigger than they are um and they're fine they're nice big missions um with mechanics of some type um, but they, but they aren't what I think people expected, um, whether those people should have expected more or not. Um, but for, for division two, they are setting that expectation. They, they have made it very clear and, um, to the point where they've said that there's going to be eight man raids. That's, that's a lot of players for a single PVE activity. Um, so I'm really, really curious to what, um, this is going to look like that curiosity drove me to Destiny and Destiny 2 to do a fairly light overview. I may do a video about this in a deeper uh, context or something like that, but um, I kind of just you know skimmed over um, what Destiny does with its raids and kind of wanted to talk about what I am kind of hoping for or expecting or whatever for the Division 2 raids. So I looked at Destiny and saw that the raids it has had is the Vault of Glass, Proto's End, King's Fall, Wrath of the Machine, and the Levi uh, Leviathan Raid. So I don't know much about most of those. I've heard um, 
opinions about Destiny 1 and its best raid. Um, Leviathan was actually one that I watched um, live. Um, I believe it was the Neil Experience. I watched him and his crew um, start that off fresh. And the one thing that raids, um, I would like to see raids in the Division 2 have that these Destiny ones have is this mystery, this mystery or this uh, the, the lack of hand-holding. Um, in the Division, it, it's a funny game where in the missions and stuff like that, there was very little, if any, mystery on how to, to do the missions. It would, You had a little GPS guide. You, know, you had flashy circles around things that you needed to hit. Um, even in Dragon's Nest, it's it's relatively easy to pick up what's going on. Um, where the fire's going on the floor, that you need to hit the terminals at the same time. Um, you know, it's it, it's it was pretty elementary. Um, I think they're good mechanics. I think those are those were good missions, um, but they weren't. Um, they were still pretty. Go here, do this. Um, where I remember watching that Leviathan raid with people who I, I think seem to be extremely well, uh, you know, very knowledgeable about Destiny and how its mechanics work and how its missions and raids work, um, and watching people struggle and try to figure that out and and think of every little thing that you know you need to be there and we need to shoot this and we have to kill these things within this amount of time and when we do we have to do that um and then trying to figure that out was just really fun to watch and it not just be shoot everything kill everything but it be puzzles and stealth and have these uh these kind of unique mechanics that you don't find anywhere else in the game um i, I think there were a lot of clues in the division one that there was a lot of training um, on mechanics and, and you saw those mechanics used but I always kind of felt like I'm sure at some point maybe there was uh, some desire to take that a step further but like we talked about you know time and money in the real world happens and um, yeah but uh, they, they've really um, they've really made these raids a huge topic with Division 2 and it seems like they are more than happy to let everyone know that there's raids in Division 2, and they uh, they sure think they're going to be awesome. So um, I think to to fulfill that, I think that mystery side of it, that, that not knowing how to do it or what it's about or what it's going to reveal, especially the first time you do it, um, is going to be really important. So I'm, I'm excited, and I really hope that they follow Destiny's uh, idea there. Um, reading about the raids and stuff like that in Destiny, um, reading about how it's, um, you know, you get specific raid gear and rewards. Um, this kind of falls into the issue that Division had when it started, that people were really upset that you had to do certain things to get certain gear. Um, it's kind of funny how things come around. And that if you listen to the community now, there's a lot of chit chat about how they wish yet you had to do certain activities to get certain types of gear. Um, you know, everything old becomes new again is what they say. And, um, this is a thing that I'm pretty mixed on my feelings of, um, you know, I see a lot of talk of people saying, well, if you want PVP gear, you should have to do PVP, um, from a logical standpoint, I think that makes sense. Um, but how do you get started in that? In our current system, if that's how it worked, if the only way you could get striker gear or whatever you would consider PVP gear was to do PVP, how do you get started? Because, <laughs> you know, we don't have like a tiered system um, when it comes to, you know, the PVP matchmaking, even in skirmish and things like that, let alone the DZ. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious to how people would react if, if there was uh, like gear, guns, brand sets, gear sets, uh, exotics um, that in the raids, um, you would have to do the raids to get them um, and how that would be balanced and how they would handle that. When it comes to the cosmetics and stuff, I definitely, I mean, you have to do that, right? Like you have to have cosmetics for these raids. Um, I, I don't even think that's a question. I think that's a obligation. And um, I am, I'm excited to hear more about that. And And I'm kind of a, a cosmetic junkie anyways so i'm excited to see how they handle that part of it and handle the rewards and, and things like that one feature of the destiny raids i think is just really 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 cool is the world's first system and 
um, this race for all these people to be the first ones to complete the raid. Um, I when I poked around a little bit, I assume that this is separated by platform. So there's probably an overall world's first, and then a world's first for each platform. Even to the point where I think you could break it down the region and stuff like that. But I I think that friendly competition is something that could be really really cool and just brings kind of a a, a natural community involvement. Um, there's so much about Division 2 that I hope that they put stuff in like the world's first that fosters this like natural community building where you know you're not forced into matchmaking you're not forced to interact with other people that there's this genuine interest in watching Twitch and seeing oh man hey so and so's crew is on this part of the raid they've done this you know where is so and so at you know who's going to get there first and then maybe you find some random group of people who no one's even heard of who knocks it out an hour before everyone else. It's, it's um, that, that natural community aspect is something I really hope that they encourage. Um, and, and I hope that it's not a thing that we have to like do on our own. I hope it's not a thing that, you know, we, there's going to be a world's first either way, right? Like that seems like a given. Hopefully it's a massive or Ubisoft supported thing. And there's a stream about it. And, they're updating on it on the official account and, and all this stuff. And it's not something where community members have to organize it and do it themselves. Um, we'll do it if we have to. This uh, community is very proactive and willing to do those things. But that's an opportunity that I think uh, could be very important for Division 2. And, and having it you know, live up to some of the hype that I think we're building and they're building. So we'll see. Uh, and then the last thing from watching that Leviathan raid and kind of reading up on the other raids a little bit, I think the biggest um, thing that is going to be interesting to see how it's handled is is how, um, while I know a lot of people really like to compare Destiny and Division, um, I, I think I still would argue that they're more different than they are the same. Um, and I think that's because they're such simple, basic parts of the game that are so different. Um, one being the perspective of the game from first to third person um, and two being the movement of the game. Um, Division has a relatively limited movement system and from what we can tell so far that's not going to change a lot um, and Destiny has double jumps and you know all the spaceman you know fly around magic stuff um, which is awesome because it works in that game's uh, world. It's great. Um, but from what I noticed, there's a lot of the mechanics in the raids that are very dependent on the things that are extremely different between the two games. So a, a big challenge that Division 2 is going to face is that, you know, how do you innovate then? Because you can't, you know, double jump on top of the statue when, you know, three enemies are killed within five seconds of each other and then double jump to a landing spot and activate the door, you know. You, know, you can't really do that in Division in that way. So how do you do that in a different way? Um, so that that's a problem that I'm really excited to see how they solve. And then again, just going back to the fact that there's going to be eight players in these raids. And so, you know, there's so much opportunity to use, you know, splitting the groups up and making them do things at the same time or making them work together in different areas where you have to use that communication. Um, one thing I thought was really cool when I was reading about the Destiny raids is I didn't know that you can't matchmake them. So you have to pick your group and go in and do it. It's not like a, you're just going to matchmake a Falcon's Lost and and figure it out, you know. And if these and if this if the raids in Division 2 are as complicated as it seems like they need to be from reading about the Destiny 2 ones and stuff or Destiny raids, um you don't want to matchmake those. That would be a nightmare. Because sometimes completing the basic missions in the division can be a nightmare in matchmaking. So I'm really curious to how they solve this this movement and realism issue where you know Destiny kind of has free reign to just be like, do we want to put this in? And they can kind of just be like, sure, why not? Where the division, while it's obviously an RPG, it's obviously a video game, there's things about those two things that make it not realistic. It's not Arma, you know. Um 
there there are still like constraints they're kind of bound to and that i think people kind of expect i know i do i know i expect them um to not go too over the top when it comes to what i would call the silly stuff um and from what we know about the division two already it seems like they've kind of made a conscious effort to get away from some of um the, the less realistic aspects of the game um like healing and stuff now is, is done in a way where you change out an armor plate in your chest in your uh, your chest rig you know where before we had these magic you know nanobots in the air that you know we may still have but maybe presented differently or this circle around the box that you gain health from for now it's going to be it's going to work different so um i'm curious to there with that kind of newfound or refound respect for the the world that the division takes place in how they're going to use that to still create interesting and rewarding and fun raids but who knows i'm going to skip gaming news because i uh don't have any that i really wanted to talk about and um, we didn't get any questions this week so if you have questions feel free to ask me on twitter on the discord whisper me on twitch whatever um, if you have any questions anything you want me to cover and again if there's anything you'd like to hear bronson talk about when, when he and i have a chat uh, let me know i'm happy to uh, integrate that into my talk with him and my own conversations um, I do ask you to check out the uh, the home of the Echo Cast a Twitter account. It's at the Division Game Two Hub. Um, you will have seen me talk a little bit about that on my Twitter. Um, that that's a place that I only post Division Two related stuff. I try to retweet other people's stuff. I retweet my stuff. Kind of in a deal where if you don't really care about what I personally have going on, um, the Division Two Game Hub may be a good place to go because. I only try to post game related stuff there, whether it's my stuff or other people's or it's news or stuff from the official account, stuff like that. Um, you can find me on Twitter, YouTube and Twitch as Bond Diesel. You can find me on Instagram as Bond Diesel underscore Twitch. I do have a Patreon. I appreciate my one lovely patron. If you would like to support me or what I do, uh, but you don't want to do it through Twitch or through other means, um, check out my Patreon. The link should be available on whatever platform you're listening to this on. That's what I have for you today. Can't wait to bring you another show next week. This was episode 16. Four months in. Blows my mind already. Thank you so much, if you're new or old, for listening to the show. I plan on trying to continue improving, getting better, bringing more people on, doing some different stuff. I'm really excited for what the next year has for us. That's why I have this time. So uh, until next time.